is it means that once you make something, um, you can send it to people and it will continue to work and things like that. So uh, the first thing, if you go to Bitbucket, uh, we just pushed up. So you go over and hit sync now. Mine is six commits behind sync. We just pushed up T10 class five, which is what we'll be doing today. And then also don't be uh, put up some hyperspec stuff as well. So um, do that, pull those things down real quick. Shouldn't take too long. Um, now, if uh, if you still find yourself um, challenged by the bucket in um, Git Bash or Terminal, uh, you can find it. I did just upload T time class five on Drive, so you can do it that way. Um, all right. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make we're each gonna make our own package of some sort. You can make the exact pack package I'm gonna make, or you can change up your function or whatever. But um, we'll go through it kind of rapidly-ish. So um, in this T time class five that I have, uh, first you need to install the package package uh, Dev Tools. Dev Tools stands for Development Tools for developing um, whatever whatever you want really in R. So install that package and then library that in. Um, let's see. I'll run it just to just to see what happens. And then, uh, so what, so DevTools has everything that you could pretty much need for making packages. It has all the tools in there for building them, for creating them. And then there's also another one that we'll put, we'll install as well called Roxygen 2. Um, in so, addition, uh, on Windows, you have to install something called RTools to oh. give a bunch of background stuff that's required to make Windows able to compile things. And on Mac, there's a similar odd package. If you run on Linux, everything is already there. Dev, Dev tools should, I think it should, in, uh, using the dependencies, pull in our tools for you, um, so that way you can use it. So uh, we libraried in um, Dev tools. I'm going to open up a new R Studio that's separate of this script, so it doesn't kill that script. We're going to be working between two different R Studios at the same time today. Um, so, in this one, we're going to go uh, File and New Project, and then we're going to say, let's do it in an existing directory, um, and I'm going to browse around for the directory that I would like to use it, or to do it in, and I'm going to say, uh, actually, I'm going to change my mind, I'm going to go back. I think I'm going to start a new directory um, and our package. So we're going to call this something. I'm going to call it SDLE T time is the package. And we should tell it where to be the subdirectory of. And I think the best place to put this would be uh, if we're in um, our Git folder. And then we go to our own T time branch and go to code and then packages. Let's put it in the packages folder. That might be the best place. Um, there's some other things in here. You can use uh, a package called Packrat. Um, it's a package development uh, software, um, but I think it's a little. Uh, I, I looked into using it for myself, and I don't think it matched what I really needed. But it is another thing that happens. You can also create a Git repository strictly for this package um, to create it. In. So those are some other two options you have in there. So now I'm gonna, I have my package name, I have where I want it to be, I'm gonna hit create project. And it's gonna switch the R Studio over to a project. Um, and this one is the project SDOET. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. Um, you can see that now inside of the project, it has opened up a uh, function here, a file, and it says, hello world, it's an example function named hello. It prints the um, hello world, um, and then it has some other things. If you just ran these couple lines here, these three lines, it's going to make a function in your um, environment. So I don't know if I talked about functions too much um, at all or how to make them, but it is in R, it's you name the name of the function, um, and then you assign it. 
You can use an equal sign as well. And then function inputs go in between your uh, uh, parentheses there, and then a bracket, and then a bracket at the end, and then whatever you want it to do. If you were to uh, make something that it would return, you would put in return blah. So whatever you want it to output, it do that. Printing will just print to the console or print to whatever you're working on, um, so that automatically outputs. So this is the one function they have in here. Um, so I'll update that one, and then if I type in hello, and it's going to come out hello world, and then it's going to give me a null because I just said return, and it didn't return anything, so it's going to let me know that it was supposed to return something, but it never was actually supposed to return anything. So that's what the null is from. Um, so that's the, that pops up there. Now, if we go back to packages, so we were in packages and we created the folder stlet time for this particular package. This is the stlet time folder. And inside are a couple different files. So the first thing is the description. So the description has a ton of different things about your package, describing it essentially. Um, what's the package name? Uh, what is it? It's a package. What it does, you would fill this out and say what it is going to do. Um, authors who wrote it, um, who to complain to, uh, and some other things. And this is the default who to complain to, your fault at somewhere.net. And uh, Hadley Wickham, the guy who made this, is, I guess he's a little bit of humor. Um, license, some other things. And then as you create more things in the package, your description file will actually automatically update. And I'll show that in a bit. The next folder in here, actually I'll go to R first. So R holds all the functions um, that the package uses. And so hello.r is in there, and so it uses uh, hello. If we go back, and so you would put all your different functions in the R folder. Um, the next one is uh, the man folder, and the man folder has your help files. So in this case, this is the help file that is um, created, that generates when you do question mark, that function, and it pops up. Um, so these are the, that's those files, that's where they sit. And then there's also a namespace file. There's going to be nothing in it right now. It's just kind of sitting there, not doing anything. Uh, this is actually really important for uh, CRAN. So if you make a package and you submit it to CRAN, the namespace is how it kind of plays nicely with other packages and functions and such. Um, and then the last thing is the actual project, and that's the whole environment that we're currently in. Um, when you exit it, it'll save everything into there um, as a project. So now let's play around with this and we can make a function of our own and also create some help files and then build the package and then install the package. And then I'll show you an example of the package that I'm working on right now. Um, so if we go back to the other R Studio that we're in. <coughs> so, okay, we installed DevTools. We did a file new project, got that. Um, uh, and we kind of perused the different stuff in there. And now to make our own function. So I wrote one for us to use. I'll just kind of quickly copy and paste it over. Oops. Copy. Take it over to the project. Um, we're going to create a new R script. Paste that one in there. Um, so this just says it's going to be t time. It's going to be a function. It takes in two inputs, x. And now x could be an array of x's or it could be a value either one, and then uh, a name of a person. And then we're going to use the print function to print out kind of like how the world did, and then we'll solve an equation and we'll return y. So um, we can run that real fast just to put it in here um, locally. And so we could write t time to Output Roger, I thought there would be T time, or T at T time, there's no T. Um, and then it will also output 4. So 4 is actually the return value. This is just a print, a print inside of there. So if we change it around and set um, Z equals T time, it's going to print out again, but it's going to save the return variables into whatever we define. So now Z equals 4 instead of returning it on the console. So there's that function. That's nice. Now we're going to save it, um, and we're going to call it tea time. 
and we gotta make sure that it's in the folder R. So we'll call it tea time. Saved. We go over to our R folder. Tea time should be hanging out here. There it is. There's tea time. Alright, so now we have a function that's in our package. It's sitting there. It's kind of almost ready to go. Um, but we want to make a help file. That's an important thing because whenever you use any functions, you want to put various things in there so people can understand what it is. So if we go back to the other one, uh, the class 5, I made a quick uh, help file for us. And so the help file is a little bit interesting. Um, it goes on top of, we copy this, go back to the other one. You put it at the very top of your function. It's not a separate file, it goes on the very top. And if you notice, these comments are different. So it has a comment tick. So comment tick means it's a Roxygen comment. And if I go back here real quick, <coughs> we have to use, uh, we need the package Roxygen 2, and it is an automated package development um, package that you can run it and it automatically goes through and creates your help files and drops them off in the man folder. It updates your description and updates the namespace all for you so you don't ever have to do it. <coughs> all you really have to do is create your functions and create the Roxygen comments at top. Um, so uh, if you don't have it already, install that package. So install that packages and then throw in Roxygen 2. Um, I believe it's lowercase for oxygen too, but I'm not going to do it again because it's just going to tell me you already have it. Um, and then library that in, should be good to go then. And if we come back over to our project, let's save that file in there real quick. So at the top, we have our first oxygen header. Uh, it's actually called a oxygen header, is the technical name for it. And at the very top, it's going to say tea time. That's going to be our title of the help file. And we're going to say this is for code, tea time, and it does tea time stuff. Um, then we write a quick description about it. This function reads in an X value or array and returns the value squared. It also talks to you. Um, and then the first parameter that you put in there using at param, uh, and that'd be X. And then the quick description about that value or array that is inputted. The next one, at param again. And our second parameter, person, name of the person uh, you want to embarrass or whatever. And then at return, we'll say this is what it's going to return to you, and it's the values of x squared. Um, and then using add examples, now these are what your examples would be. It says input a set of x values and name of the person, so y equals t time to, um, and then person. And then the very last and probably most important thing, actually it is the most important thing, is on the very last line of your action comments, you have to put at export in the function. At export will then put it over to the namespace, and when you install the package or build the package, it says we want these functions to be external, and when you install the package, you will now have the access to it. Alright, so we saved it, we're going to save this. It's all good in there, we have it all, looks nice. If we go back and look at the man folder, um, we're going to see that hello is in there, um, but nothing else, nothing else is. And we're going to use dev tools, uh, double colon, and document. And document comes from the Rockstar 2 package. And we're just going to run that. And it's going to say um, updating SDLE T time documentation, loading SDLE T time. Um, first time using Roxygen 2, upgrading automatically. Um, it's going to change description, the namespace, and it's going to write ttime.rd. So if we come back in the man folder, ttime.rd is there. And if we um, click on it, it says here's generated by Roxygen 2. Don't add it by hand, no purpose to. Might as well just do it elsewhere. And it creates the, the code that's necessary um, for your uh, help file in a package. So we've got name, alias, title, the usage, arguments, um, and all that. So that's kind of nice. And then if we go back and look at the description, it's going to say uh, we're using Roxygen notes in there. And if we go to the namespace, it's going to tell us that we should export tea time when we build or install this.
this particular package. Any questions so far? It's kind of actually really, really simple to make packages. It's almost it's very surprising how easy it is um, and how automated it is and that all, all of a sudden you can create these help files out of nowhere. Um, all right, so I think we have enough in here one now. One function that, per script. It will work with more than one function yeah. per script, but that's not a good practice. So there's, there's a couple things um, in the R folder. So actually, the hello that's sitting in here, it doesn't have an export on it. So that function is internal to the package. So you can write more functions internal to the package that are necessary to be run in your other functions. Um, you can do that. You can also write sub-functions inside, but it will only export one function and the one function that you define within one file. Or at least I'm pretty sure. And that's what I've been doing. So, um, it's but, the right practice. Yeah. So that works kind of nice. You can put little sub-functions in there to make your uh, just to make your code look nicer for yourself, but it's only going to export one function um, per script. Um, so, all right, so we've got all that. Now let's make it. Um, so this is what we need to do to build, and it's pretty complicated. DevTools, colon, colon, build. And it's going to build. All right, so it just built our package. Um, did a couple different things, checked for some stuff. Now there's actually a ton more things you can have inside of a package that this would actually build. I'll show those a little bit later in one of our packages. But so now it has created a package and it's told me uh, the path to it and there it is right there. So it's a .tar.gz file, which is a compressed file that has all the different information um, about your package. So there's the package, all nice and tidied up. So if we go back to our other R Studio down. All right, we use DevTools document and we use DevTools build. Uh, let's install this package. Okay. Now, this isn't a CRAN package. The CRAN package, when you write install.packages and put the name in, it automatically points to CRAN and it looks up there for it, grabs it, pulls it down. Um, this is a local package that we made, so we have to change a couple things in the install.packages. Um, and let's see, let me ask what my direct working directory is here real quick. Downloads. Okay, that should work. Actually, I'm going to change this over to set. You can set the working directory really to whatever you want. Okay, it should, it should work. Um, yeah, I don't think I have. Yeah, okay, that's going to work. So install packages, uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to tell it what the path is so the computer can go find it, and that path is what it just spit out to you after you um, built it. So you use that path. Another useful nice thing one. to point out is just that in the path there, you'll notice that the path is defined with forward slashes. Mm -hmm. On a Windows machine, paths are usually typed as backslashes, oh. but you can live everything with forward slashes. Yeah, That's the more universal Mac, Linux, Windows way. And our studio does translate it all on the fly. Yeah, so we've got, for me it's H drive, get 16 SLA T time, and so most people should have 16 SLA T time, your name, code, packages, SLA T time, and then that. The next part we have to write in, uh, so comma, repos equal null, so it's not a repo, it's not up on cloud, don't look for it there. <coughs> and the, the next thing is, the type of it is a source because we're telling what path to go and grab it. And then the last piece is we want to tell what library to install it to. And so I'm using the symbol dot, and that just says right where we're sitting. Let's just throw it in there. So we'll run this, and it should work. Oh, B is not found. Highlighted. All right, installing packages. Done. Okay, SCLET time is now installed. The next part we have to do is the package stlet time. We have the library in. We got to tell what library it's in. All right, let's grab that. And now we can do uh, t time. And so here's our help file that we just created. It says t 
tea time, out of the package, SDLE tea time, um, description, the usage, arguments that we just talked about, uh, details, and an example. And uh, let's use this example. Don't copy paste it. It worked pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. So um, there's our function. It works. It's on a package. We can share it with people. We can install it other places. Um, so that's kind of a really nice, nice thing to be able to do. Um, any questions on that? It's kind of a quick, what's how to just make a package. So how did you get it so we could install it from Bitbucket? So yes, the next one, and this one's a little bit more interesting, um, is installing, we'll install the edifice package. I'm going to have to like go offline real quick so I can use my password and stuff. Um, but so the next piece, and this is, you can now install it off GitHub or Bitbucket or another repo source of some. Something that is, what's the other one? GitLab. GitLab. Um, anything that Dev, Dev Tools supports or understands. So Dev Tools or Dev Tools has installed Bitbucket as a function. Oh, and by the way, the double colons actually mean uh, use this package, the function out of this package, Dev Tools. So if you had multiple packages with the same function name um, and you told it not to mask them. You would, you would be able to point to the package and use that function. Mm -hmm. So, but just good practice when using dev tools to use the double columns. Um, so the first thing that we have to define, and this might be more of a VDI virtual desktop that we have issue than maybe a normal issue. I haven't really checked. Um, but for the VDI, we have to change the lib paths. So if I put lib paths dot lib paths. Um, it's going to tell, tell me, oh, I already changed them before, so, um, but usually it would say something else crazy. We want that to be exactly as daily tea time. Um, let me check real quick that I don't already, because I was playing around with this earlier. I don't want to have put in, put in, I get I already installed the package, downloads tea time. Just to be safe, I'm going to open up a new R Studio because I think I might have actually library in this package and it's not going to work. So I'm going to use lib paths. And this is just the live demo by me, so you don't have to do it because Brian can give you my password. And I'm just going to say. So now my dot lib paths should be downloads. Okay, good. And then I'm going to use this install Bitbucket. I'm going to say what repo it's in. It's in CWRU SDLE 16 edifice. Um, the authorization user is me. The password is a password. Uh, and then the subdirectory of that. We have multiple branches in there. So the subdirectory is going to be edifice. Um, inside. So we want to go grab it this. So now I'm going to mute this for a second as I install it and then I'll show you what what ends up happening. And hopefully it works on the first try so this doesn't take too long. So you can see it's installing all the different dependencies that I've told the package um, that we want. Uh, map tools, uh, flyer, R miscellaneous, stream metabolism, tons of different. Um, and this is this is the part where it breaks that ever breaks. Uh, a lot of different packages that we set as dependencies, and so I didn't get time to talk on that. But that's a little bit more of another thing. If your package requires certain functions of other packages. You say that, so that way it does it. So it says done, Edifice is installed. Great, fantastic. Um, put that in here. And 
end, we can look at some of the edifice stuff. So the question, double question mark, edifice, should bring up the um, vignette. So vignette's something we didn't talk about in packages, but when you create a package and you do all of your um, uh, help functions, or all your help files and your functions, you need one big document that talks about the entire package. Um, and double question mark brings up the vignette. So if you look in here, Um, let's see, it should, oh, I didn't library them. Library and edifice. And we need to tell it the, okay, library in, should have it. I have a couple functions that I use. No addition is one of my functions. It has the help file, everything about it. Um, the arguments, things you need, details, values, examples. Um, if I do question mark edifice, it should have, oh, I guess my vignette is down right now. Or it didn't, yeah, we have to solve that. On some other versions of it, um, it did have a full long form vignette of an HTML document that went through every single function of what it was doing. Um, but in the, in the one that's currently up on Bitbucket, that's not in there. And we can kind of go through and look at what's actually inside of this massive package. This is actually kind of big. Let's see if I can scroll up and show some of the stuff that was happening without getting too close. That's what I mean. So, um, so it went through and found all the different um, things in there. If I go up one more, then you know, password and everything's up there. But it's installing the package into H downloads. Uh, it's trying some URLs for all the things like map tools, Flyer that it needed to go grab our misc, um, checked all those packages, downloaded all of them, and then installed Edifice afterwards. So it's all in there. And if we go and take a look at what Edifice looks like, and this is the repo that it just pulled from. So this repo is sitting here, it just pulled from that repo, but grabbed it from Bitbucket, pulled it down, opened it up. And if we go into Edifice, there's a lot of other different things. So R and man we looked at, um, inst has the exterior data. So um, you can have internal data and exterior data. So this data uh, you can pull in as example data to run through all the functions and to test them all out. Um, I could technically actually run that in there right now, but it takes a little bit. So let's kind of skip that. So you can put data along with it. So like we saw empty cars that comes with a package, um, with the package mass, it comes with the Boston data set. You always want to send an example data set for people to use in your examples that you get. Uh, man folder, so here's all the different help files that we have. So there's kind of a lot of them sitting in there. Um, all the different R files. These are all functions that are exported out. Um, oops. Also, a big part of packages is testing. So you want to make sure that you can test to make sure that all your functions are actually working. And so uh, Jack has done a ton of work with this and uh, in testing things, analytics, all these different fun all these um, files right here, all go through and test all the different functions and make sure that they're working with synthetic data. So it goes through, checks them all. Okay, good. Moving. On. And so those are the concept of unit tests. So you really want to make little tiny tests with little tiny data sets that check each one thing of your package, all the functions work, so that if they don't run, you'll know which function is broken. So yeah. they're not totally comprehensive things. They're instead almost testing. They're targeting, trying to do every little thing you're supposed yeah. to be able to do. Yeah. So Jack uses a thing called... So a um, question. So in our example, how, what's the best way of showing the dependencies and having the dependencies installed also? So the dependencies come in in the description file. Uh, where was it? Uh, Should be in your package. Test analytics. Um, actually, I'll just go into here. So if I go back to files, make my way over there. H, go grab it. But 
it's in your description file of where all the dependencies are. Um, so git manifest manifest. And so in here, if we look at the description file, so there's way more things now in the description file than what we originally had. So it has edifice analyzes building electricity data. Um, its current version is 0 0.2.3. Um, it has myself, Mohammed, Ellie, Jack, and Alexis in there as authors. And then um, a description of it suggests that you use these packages for it, but then absolutely must have and import all of these packages. Okay. And so this one will say, yeah, you got to make sure you have all of these. And so we've got a lot of different packages that we have to use with this so far. It has a license in there. Um, thing called lazy data makes it load faster without being completely complete, but it seems to be perfectly fine. Uh, the vignette builder is knitter, and then the rocks to know there. And then also, if, go, if I go to the namespace, the namespace has all the different functions that it exports. Um, I think there's some other things we were supposed to have in the namespace at some point, but right now we just have the functions in there. And then um, all, pass the test. All the functions can export? Um, only the ones that we want to use. So only the ones you want to use outside of the see, package. And here there's okay. one, you can have internal functions that are available only inside the package. Yeah, so let's see if I can look at one of these. Coordinate is an internal function that um, actually doesn't have any Roxygen comments to it and it isn't exported. So currently when you load the package, it doesn't do anything. It's just internal to it, but it will work as a function internally in the package. So you have to those Roxygen comments. So, yeah, so that's kind of um, there's a lot of work that went into making this particular package. Um, there's a lot of kind of weird things that happen sometimes. Uh, building vignettes, we've had some trouble usually. Um, uh, the reason why there wasn't a vignette in this one is because it actually it takes the repo and Bitbucket compiles it. It brings it down into R, compiles it, builds it, and then installs it. Um, in other versions, we were installing it locally or building it locally and making sure the vignette was good and then just having the one file and you could pull that file um, but we're trying to make it much more uh, synced up with um, Bitbucket and we've been having some trouble with vignettes but we'll figure that out eventually. But you should have them. So some people think that the tar GZ is the way, is the loc that the tar GZ is a package mm -hmm. and it is a package for installing locally but that's not what is used when you install from Bitbucket or GitHub. Yeah. That's where it installs from a proper, you can see the whole yeah. structure and everything. Because actually right now, I could open up the package and I could build the vignette real quick and then push it back up and pull it back down and the vignette will be there. Um, but you actually want it to make the vignette as it comes down. Yeah. But there's, some work, there's a lot of workarounds to different things, but technically it should yeah, any other questions on packages? I think a lot of these things are things you don't necessarily need off the bat until you want to go and make it much more useful and user friendly for other people. But using your functions and keeping them all in one place and then being able to install it all of a sudden and then use it in other places without worrying about having to source your function and create it and put it in your local environment. You can put it in your global environment and it'll always be there. Um, so it's a real nice way to do that. And also to make help files so that way whenever you pass off your project, someone else knows what the heck is going on. So that's kind of nice thing. So I guess we only have about 10 more minutes left. I think Dung Hui is going to do some stuff on hyperspec. Yes. Um, we'll see if I gave you enough time.
introduction of uh, introduction of high spec uh, package, which is generally used uh, for the data analysis of uh, uh, hyper spectral data. Like uh, we got data from Ruby's uh, RPIR data, then we will use this package for further analysis, uh, like a baseline correction, like uh, you choose uh, the intensity, also how to uh, make your uh, spectrum to a standardized. Uh, so first, I would like to tell uh, the hyperspec object. The structure of hyperspec object, is, it has four slots. Let's first uh, load the package. And then uh, let's take a look at one of the uh, standard data inside the package called uh, control. So you can see uh, there are four slots. One is uh, wavelength. Uh, which is uh, is the, the wave num uh, wavelength number inside uh, of your data, and the data here uh, shows the based on your local count of the data, it shows the intensity of the of the wings, some, uh, and the label here usually including all the x axis and y axis legends. Uh, well, people may not have seen STIR before STR function which is just a nice way to get a quick summary of some data and things like that, the data frame. People have used head or tail before, but. And the last one, at log, this, uh, this slot usually, it doesn't contain that much useful information. And inside the structure function, you, uh, you can see the summary, we have a uh, 875 uh, data. So here you use, uh, we just choose the uh, use C1 and 101 means I grab the first and the 101st data out. And here is just a two uh, with uh, intensity data. Then I will first uh, Based on that structure, I will first tell how to uh, recreate a uh, hyperspec. Sometimes you need to grab one or two uh, the data you want from a uh, uh, big amount of data. Then you use a new function, and uh, in hyperspec means object uh, name, and you use a data one, which is uh, created from here. I grab out the first of uh, and the 43rd and 100th data out, and that will be put into the second uh, slot, which is called SPC. And the wavelength uh, slot will be the uh, wavelength number from the uh, corrected data. And also, you use uh, uh, font wavelength equal to paste to add the legend into your data. And let's talk about
find you again. Yeah. The object with which I create the you know, third step. Uh, I think now it should work. Yes, here's the new uh, hyper mm -hmm. uh, spec I create, uh, which includes three spectrum. So that's the way you use a new hyperspec function to create a uh, hyperspec object. That uh, uh, so after we know the how to create a hyperspec, we'll try to uh, reverse the wave number. So basically, when you uh, plot the uh, data out, you raise from a 700 to 100 and 800. So we use the reverse WL wavelength number wavelength point reverse is equals to true and to reverse the wave number and also uh, use legend and text function to add the legend into the specific mm -hmm. position if you saw uh, this legend function is not so proper then you can tune from here the, uh, so the 100 and 1150 means the x axis and the 100 uh, 1500 means the y axis you can tune by the different uh, point and also there's another function called uh, as matrix when you want to use the hyperspec object data for some other function like baseline function the baseline function can't recognize the hyperspec so you have to use as matrix to change your Hyperspec data to uh, matrix data, and in that way, in that function, after the transformation, they only transform the uh, uh, the uh, intensity of your peak, but without the wave wavelength or wave number. So you can add, uh, you can extract the wave number from the hyperspec data. Use the uh, new hyperspec at wavelength to extract the wave number slot. And basically there are two uh, baseline query function with the first one called SPC fit poly and that's for the right and uh, so this is the uh, original spectrum and uh, So here we are, cho we are choosing two points to do the baseline function, which you can see from uh, uh, this plot function. I first extract the two spectrum one and one hundred face uh, one hundred and first one. Then I choose a, a wave range from six hundred thirty three and six hundred forty. Another wave range is uh, one thousand seven hundred eighty eight. And one thousand seven hundred ninety. So after the SPC fit poly, you got the baseline function and the name it to uh, BL. And then I uh, plot out the uh, BL, which is the baseline function here. So the difference is that. You choose the two point to do the baseline correction, and this baseline correction function is a linear uh, least least square fit. So you just have two points. If you want to uh, choose more point and do a higher uh, like polynomial or uh, baseline correction, then you can add the uh, point order here. So if you didn't mention the poly order, uh, poly order in that SPC fit poly function, this uh, order will be automatically one. And if you add it three, so you can see the baseline function now uh, become much higher than most of the peak. So if you increase the uh, point order 
to higher number, then you will uh, lose some of the peak, and most of the noise will be removed by the baseline correction. But in that way, you will find uh, maybe some of the useful peak was <laughs> just removed by baseline correction. So we want to use the SPC fit Hall function, always try different uh, uh, a number of uh, Hall order, so that uh, you can get most of the peak uh, extract, but most of the noise removed. And you can plot with a plot SPC to uh, uh, get a stacked spectral that you can Now I uh, use the original spectrum minus the baseline function so that I can get the corrected spectrum. And so this is the, uh, so because the uh, poly polynomial order I use three, so you can see most of the people mm -hmm. under the baseline. If you use one, most of the people will be above the baseline. And in that US way, you use a uh, stack is equal to true to make different uh, uh, spectrum plot in the one spectrum. And the uh, wave range function, the wave range function here is to choose the uh, range you want to present if your uh, uh, the peak you're looking at is a range like one, 1 to uh, 1300 you can just uh, remove the other parts of the spectrum and then we will compare the uh, two different uh, Type of uh, baseline correct function. One is SPC fit and poly, which is used. One is SPC fit poly below. The below the, the difference here is the below. You can choose the uh, the point below your baseline correction. So if you choose a baseline correction, uh, the point of uh, baseline correction is lower than fifteen. Then you can see a difference here. This is spectrum of just the use the SPC fit poly and uh, here is just a little bit uh, point below that baseline and this one is when you use uh, SPC fit poly below and the set the point below that baseline is 50 then you can see more of the point uh, and more of the noise here are removed to uh, the position below baseline And finally, I will uh, tell how is there any uh, how to uh, present your data in a more fancy way with the RGL package. So RGL package can recognize a hyperspec object, and you first uh, name uh, the corrected uh, spectrum to A, and uh, eight dollars and T means you add uh, this third dimension to your data because your data only have wavelength intensity and now you add the uh, number of your uh, spectrum to the, three, the third dimension and 
and those uh, access really uh, trying to uh, set up the direction of uh, the three axes, also the uh, relative uh, height of your relative width and height of your three axes. So you've got four R tabs on your front. of R tabs. No, 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 left, left, left. Left, left. You gotta do left. Yeah. Is it one of those? Hot zoom. Hot zoom. No. Oh. If, it, if it worked on other computers, then. Switching to Python, yep.